Today is my birthday. Well, by the time you're watching this, it's gonna be way past my birthday, but let's just ignore that and pretend it's my birthday today. I just turned 24 and I thought it'd be a good idea to just, you know, sit down and reflect on the past year of my life. Even though 23 was a really big year for me, it also felt kind of weird. It's like, I just finished university and now I'm working this full-time job for an indefinite amount of time. And I think at this time, everyone around you is starting to move in their own separate paths. Before, you know, you were in school, you kind of had the same goal to graduate and now everyone's doing their own thing. And it's the first time where you kind of have to think to yourself that like, damn, I'm an adult now but you don't feel like an adult yet because you just finished school. And what makes it even worse is turning 24 because now you're no longer in your early 20s, but you're in your mid 20s, which kind of hits you like a truck, like man, I'm getting old. I think that reflection is an important part of growth. And considering that this is a personal finance YouTube channel, I thought that I would openly reflect about my personal net worth and my investing so far. And before we get to any of the numbers, I just wanna make it super clear that I'm not trying to brag or anything in this video. I understand that there's a lot of people that have more than me and there's a lot of people who have less and that money can be a pretty touchy subject. Even though my platform is small, I just wanna share a piece of my financial journey because I feel that everyone can benefit from financial transparency with all the smoke and mirrors that's going on on social media and YouTube nowadays. Okay, so with all that out of the way, my net worth on my birthday was $134,782.99. But let's just say 134K to make it easy. So this $134,000 is split between Canadian dollars and US dollars, but I'm just gonna keep everything in USD to make it easier for you guys. Currently I have $13,000 sitting in cash, which is around 10% of my net worth. My normal expenses from month to month is around 2,300 to 2,500. So I have around four months of that saved in an emergency fund. And then some cash in a Canadian bank account to pay off my student loans. The rest of the money, I just keep in a checking account for day-to-day -day expenses. The other 90% of my net worth or $133,000 is all in investments split between Canadian investments, US investments, and crypto. By the time you're watching this, I think you will clearly see that the stock market isn't really doing the best. And to be honest, it wasn't doing the best when I wrote the script and it wasn't doing the best when I took all the screenshots on my birthday. So with that being said, I have some pretty large unrealized losses, but the key word here is unrealized. Now, obviously I'd rather my portfolio be green rather than red, but considering that I'm investing for the long term, I don't really lose sleep overnight for these unrealized losses. I personally find that this is a great time to keep on investing and average down into the market, quote unquote, getting stuff on sale. I just wanted to keep that part in there just in case you're kind of struggling with seeing your portfolio down right now. And just know that you're not the only one, but let's continue breaking down this portfolio a little bit further. This investment portion of my net worth is pretty boring, to be honest. The majority of it is in escrow, which is a Canadian all-in-one ETF or VTI, which is a US total stock market ETF. I currently have the equivalent of $45,000 in my Questrade account. 10,000 of that is split between the Bitcoin and the Ethereum ETF. And the rest of it is in that all-in-one ETF earlier that I was talking about called Xgrow. I also have around $47,000 in my 401k. 90% of this is in a VTI equivalent mutual fund and the other 10% is in a global equities mutual fund. I also have around $29,000 in a regular brokerage account and some of this is from my company's RSUs and the other portion of it is in VTI. I have around $4,800 in a Roth IRA. I also have $37,000 in an ESPP which I will sell once I'm able to and buy VTI with it. Okay, so just to wrap up that last part, I have around $129,000 in the stock market, again, mostly in VTI or XGrow. Next, let's talk about my crypto investments. In total, I have around $4,400 in crypto spread across various crypto exchanges with the biggest one being Gemini. This number used to be a lot bigger a couple months ago, but Bitcoin going from 65,000 down to 20, had a small effect on my portfolio. So if you actually add up all my cash and all my investments, it ends up being more than my net worth, but that's because I'm not yet including my student loans. Currently, I have to pay around $15,000 Canadian towards my student loans, and this works out to be around $12,000 US. The Canadian government actually froze interest on the federal portion of the loan, which is actually a considerable amount for my student loan in particular. So I've decided to just keep on paying the minimums and you know wait until they make the decision on how much to increase it by, and then I will probably start paying it off a little bit more aggressively just to get it out of my hair. So the minimum payment for my student loan is around $150 a month Canadian, which works out to be like, I don't know, like $110, $120 US. So after subtracting the student loans from my investment in my cash, we get back to the original $134,000 number. I just want to make a quick note. I don't have any other valuable possessions that could add to this number. Maybe I could sell my phone or my laptop or, you know, this camera for another 1500 bucks, but I won't include that in this calculation. Okay. So how did I get to this number? Because having this amount of money is pretty uncommon for someone who's 24 years old. For starters, I'm a software engineer and that's probably probably one of the highest paying salaries you can get right out of university. My starting salary is around $110,000 a year and I have stocks and bonuses on top of that. I grew up in Canada where university is far, far more affordable than it is in the US. I also took a year and a half off of school to do internships, which all paid very well and helped me pay off my student loan earlier. Those internships also helped me line up my full-time offer after school so I didn't really have to spend too much time looking for a job. I've also been investing since 18 or 19 years old and I would consider myself a little bit more frugal than the average person. All 
these factors together obviously don't tell the whole entire story. And I think there's a lot more luck, privilege, and hard work that went on behind the scenes. But I think these key factors is what's enabled me to invest as much as I do. So yeah, that's my net worth. At the beginning of 2022, when I sat down and wrote my financial goals, I had a goal of getting $150,000 in net worth by my birthday, which now we can see did not happen. Looking back, I'm not upset that I didn't reach my goal. I basically did everything that I could to do it, except for maybe like fix the economy or stop the coronavirus or stop a war. I only look at the things that I can control, like how much I save, how much I spend, and how much I can invest. And everything else that I can't control, I just try not to think about it. And even though at the beginning of 2022, when I wrote down that goal of $150,000, I knew it was mathematically possible, but now that I'm reflecting on it, it's just kind of crazy that I got so close. I've been investing for close to five years now, and just to see my net worth grow from nothing to what it is now is actually crazy to me. And I think that if I could show my 18-year-old self how far we've come, not only financially, but just you know in my life, I don't think he believed the kind of person that we'd be. Reflecting on all this, I realized that there has to be so much privilege and so much luck to even get to this point. And I'm just extremely grateful for all the opportunities that have been given to me. I mean, the fact that I was able to get high paying internships throughout university and basically pay for school by myself, or the fact that my job wasn't really affected by coronavirus, or that I was able to even invest and not have to send money home to help my parents, are all things that I'm extremely grateful for. Looking at my financial goals going forward into 24 years old to 25 years old, I wanna keep on growing my net worth and hopefully hit $200,000 by my 25th birthday, assuming that the stock market doesn't implode. I'm also considering buying my first rental property, but that's something that's still in my mental workshop. I haven't really like hashed out the ideas or really put much thought into it. Some of my more personal goals next year is to continue to travel, to grow my career more professionally, and to keep on growing with you on YouTube. So if you wanna tag along, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video.